Now that we've finished talking about the error, so about the one touch error modeling, we now need to talk about the one touch error modeling's bigger brother. That is the error surface optimization. Now, what we're going to do is, as you can see, I've um, loaded uh, in an example LMP2 um, uh, car that we're going to be basically performing this on. So to access the error surface optimization, we just simply go to simulate and we go to aerodynamic modeling. And this basically brings up the aerodynamic modeling coefficient that we all know and love. And we talked about in one of the previous chassis sim error map creation tutorials. Now, we've got two options to do error surface fitting. The first is basically the old legacy second order surface error fitting, and that does have its place, um, particularly to really nail down the nuances of the error map. However, if we click on here to optimize the error map, you'll see that basically this will bring up a number of different parameters that um, we can play with. And in particular, what we will be doing here is pretty much filling in the details of this equation here. So what we do is basically we click on the error results file and we go into our LMP2 example and we load in our error analysis results file. Now, what we also need to do, remember the crux of this technique is to ensure that uh, we're basically plotting out our error map as slivers of fun uh, we're visualizing it as functions of front ride height. So what we need to do is we need to basically set our front ride height bounds um, correctly. So for this particular car, we have a minimum front ride height in the error map of 14 mil and a maximum front ride height of about 45 mil. And that's really important to take a note of because this will basically do the optimization properly throughout uh, the whole uh, throughout uh, the whole ride height range. Now, you'll see here that I've basically got parameters to fill in for downforce, drag, and arrow balance. Basically, and what all that we're doing is basically filling in the parameters of and the bounds of what we're optimizing. So you'll see here that I've got a max delta CLA, a max delta curvature, and a max delta rear uh, as a, a max delta rear ride height. All that pertains to is that basically pertains to basically the delta indicates how uh, how far we're going to let the peak value drift up and down. The delta ride height basically indicates basically how far we're going to let that peak ride height drift um, uh, uh, drift across. And the curvature basically allows us to basically dictate um, the delta of the curvature of basically how far we're going to allow that, uh, uh, how far we're going to let it basically let the curve um, twist. Now, in terms of rough rules of thumbs, the defaults here are actually, a, they're relatively good start points. They are going to vary from car to car, but they're good start points. So you can see here that I've got a max delta here of about 0.2, and I've got a max CLA there of about 3. Now, for this particular car, I can, I can pretty much get this varying the way I want. So for example, if I was generating more front downforce uh, the lower I went, and let's just say it dropped off linearly, I can basically linearize that off or if I really don't quite know what it's going to do I'll basically select a nominal value of let's just say I'll choose 3.2 here a CLA value here of 3.2 across the board and I'll um, linearize that accordingly and then when I'm happy I'll click on OK. Now the curvature parameters rough rules of thumb so far, we found that 300 is a good round number to use. Um, obviously, that will vary from motor vehicle to motor vehicle. And as you get used to this, you will really get a feel for the numbers that will work and won't work. But 300, that's a good starting point. And what I can do is let's just say that, like with our previous, uh, previous example, let's just say that as the front ride height comes up, the arrow values don't vary that much. So basically, we can put in, say, a value there of 200. And then linearize, uh, then linearize across the board. And if we're okay, we basically can click okay. But once again, if we don't know what we're going to do, we'll just set it at 300, and basically linear, and then basically we linearize across the board. 
Ditto for drag. Basically, what we would wind up by doing is basically fix a nominal drag value. And rough rules of thumb, when you do your arrow analysis, uh, when you do your arrow, arrow analysis results or you do a hand calc result, that's basically the value you'll put in here. So let's just say for the sake of the argument, we'll just put in 1.1 and 1.1 across the board. As we discussed for downforce, we can basically take an or we can if we know that's going to producing more drag at the lower front right height than the front right height, we can linearize that accordingly. But once again, this is something that ultimately is up to the discretion of the user. But as rough rules of thumb, basically just get your rough averages for downforce and arrow balance, and then basically um, put and then basically put those in. Ditto for a max rear right height parameters. This is actually a very interesting parameter to adjust because remember. This parameter down here basically tells us the rear uh, the, basically tells us the rear right height that we're going to get a max value. So, for example, if for example for the lower right height we can say choose a value of 40 mil, and we know that as it drops off it's going to be less effective, we can linearize. Uh, uh, we can linearize effectively. Please ensure this rear right height parameter is within the band, the rear right height bounds of the arrow map. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time going nowhere very, very quick. And this is a very, very important point. Another point I want to outline to you is that sometimes, particularly given the nature of what we're trying to curve fit and what we're trying to do, for that rear right height parameter, you might need to actually go beyond the max rear right height. That's perfectly OK, because just remember, this is a curve fit. And just remember, no curve fit is so perfect. But what it's designed to do is to show you what to do with the rest of um, uh, with uh, the rest of um, the uh, with um, the rest of the parameters. Okay, ditto. Same thing for arrow balance. Rough rules of thumb: you basically stick a nominated arrow balance as basically percentage divided by a hundred here. So. As a rough rule of thumb, I'm just going to leave it at 40% for the time being, and I'll let the optimization routine basically do its thing and construct what it's doing. Now, a nice little feature that you've got here is that you've got a little tab here that says apply settings to current arrow map. Well, let's just say that you're dealing with an arrow map you really don't quite have a feel for, but you want to get a rough idea of what it visualizes. We can basically click this button here and apply settings to the current arrow map, and we can go in and basically see what that's like. So that's just a, a nice little feature you can use. As we've um, said before, um, for arrow balance, I find that about, once again, your deltas are ended as percentages divided by 100. In this case, I've chosen about giving it a delta about plus or minus 5%. It will vary from motor vehicle to motor vehicle. Plus or minus 5% is a good thing to get you going. You'll also notice here that for most of the most of my max deltas, uh, for my delta for the curvatures, I've set to about 100. So far, we've found that as a, as a rough rule of thumb. I've also set the deltas for looking for the peak rear right height of about 10 mil, so or 9.99997. So um, uh, that basically sorts that out. So let's just and also too, you'll notice here with all of the checkboxes here, I can either do a downforce map individually, a drag map individually, or an arrow map individually, or I can do all three at the same time. What you do is up to you. So basically, what we do here is we click on the tab that says click here to optimize aero surface and we're basically going to do a whole uh, and we're basically going to do the whole thing we click on OK here we click on OK here I'm just going to double check that um, uh, I'm just going to unclick the one touch arrow modeling because I actually want it to use all the settings that we've got in here we click on OK we go to the start simulation button we click on start simulate and it's now going to do its thing and like we did before, we're going to go out, we're going to have a cup of coffee, stretch your legs, and we'll come back when it's finished. Welcome back. So we've, uh, we've now finished our aero surface optimization. You can see here that I've um, terminated this calculation just a little bit early. But uh, that's a, and the only reason I've terminated a bit early is, I did it, is that I actually did this um, uh, pre uh, previously. So it will echo back, just like with our one-touch modeling, it will echo back to the design it came up with. But more importantly, though, what it will do is it will generate these following files: error balance table.txt, CDA table.txt, 
and CLA table.txt in the same directory that our chassis sim car file lives in. So to view those results, all we have to do is basically for standard and above, we click on the front, uh, we click on the front wing, we click on edit downforce ride height map, we go to import our text file, we click on CLA table, we click on open, and that basically imports the arrow map we've just generated. And as you can see, this is basically our arrow map. And if we like what we see, we click on OK. So as you can see, it's not the most perfect arrow map in the world, but you can see very clearly that basically we've got sensible variation in the arrow map. For the drag map, I'll go to import my text file. I'll click on my CDA table and this is my drag map. And as you can see really, really clearly, once again, it's sensible. You can see basically where you drag minimas. You can see basically where you need to be basically right, uh, uh, where you need to be um, riding the car. Ditto for arrow balance. I'll go to import my text file. I'll click on arrow balance. This is my arrow balance map. So all of a sudden, you can see very, very clearly the real power of this on the simple principle. It gives you an almost instant picture of what the arrow map is doing. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what is so powerful about aero surface modeling. So we've imported all that. And if you're happy with all that, all we've got to do is click on OK. The arrow map is committed. We go to File, Save As. We save, um, uh, uh, we, uh, we'll um, save this example. And we'll just overwrite um, that uh, particular map that we've got. We say yes, and then basically we are done. That is the power of our aero surface modeling. The fact that in a matter of minutes, you've built up a very, very accurate picture of your aero map. Now, we're going to discuss this in further detail in um, the upcoming series of um, the data and dynamics um, seminars that are, uh, that, uh, are going to be held, um, that are going to be held in um, Sydney and Indianapolis. Um, in 2011, the one in Sydney is uh, going to be um, in uh, late August. So get to the Data and Dynamics website, www.data and dynamics, and register for that because we're going to be talking about this at length. But also, too, um, I would encourage you register for, uh, uh, particularly if you're running, a, if you're engineering a race car for a race team, register for a demo. We can get you sorted out with a demo for chassis sim so you can try this for yourself so you can really see how this can be such a valuable tool and why it can be such an edge for you and your race team.